PWCC is a great way to sell your sports cards. If you're looking for a way to support the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel, consider using the promo code CAJUN, all caps, C-A-J-U-N, when you're selling your cards on the PWCC marketplace. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another uh, episode of NBA Past and Present. This is going to be a little two-part piece, Jonathan. We've never done this uh, and, and this is Coach Jonathan Pixley, the grind father, uh, joining me uh, again, as always. First of all, welcome to the show. Everything's good. You just sent your youngest daughter, your last child, Ooh. off to college, and you're an empty nester. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, it, first of all, how red is my shirt? Second of all, <laughs> the it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I, it's crazy, yeah. man, because I, I walk back in the house and there's nobody there but me and my wife. Now, granted, we're going to be awesome empty nesters, but... It was crazy because I was like, what, why am I like emotional? I had people look at me and go, we hadn't seen you cry in 18 years. Are you, yeah. sure? Are you about to cry? I'm like, yeah. Oh, That's right. tough, man. Uh, uh, Jonathan, uh, listen. Okay, so he, this is for the old people that are watching the channel, and we're going to yeah. get started. Today's topic, by the way, is going to be we are ranking the best NBA big threes, in, uh, the best three-player foundation for all 30 NBA franchises from 30 all the way to run, all the way to one. But my question to you is this, as an empty nester, was it harder dropping your kids off for their first day of school, like kindergarten, or uh, shipping off your daughter? And then she's not that far away. She's a couple hours away. She's going to play college uh, volleyball at Mississippi College, which is only a couple hours away. So she's there. You'll see all her games, either in person or on TV, uh, which was harder. Oh, way harder dropping her off. It was crazy. Really? I, I didn't expect it to be that way. And then, look, I, look, we're going to – we're going to be super busy and all that. It's great. And I'll tell you this right now. What I am pumped about is that chick is a little gangster. Like, mm -hmm. she's up there ready to take somebody's spot, right? She's a setter. <laughs> she's ready to take somebody's spot right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Well, Where's look, we, we both got daughters playing college athletics. Yeah. So what a dream come true that is. I mean, I'm sure awesome. we both thought that we were going to have, you know, Brian Jr. and Jonathan Jr., you know, <laughs> kid, boys playing. But we both got daughters, and I'm about to have a second daughter playing college, uh, college soccer. So – it's going to be awesome to watch their careers. Their careers are kind of intermingled because I have a college sophomore. You now have a college freshman. I have a high school senior who's coming right, right behind her. So we're going to have a good four or five year run here where we get to watch our kids uh, do some things in college and maybe they can uh, surpass what we did. Um, you got no excuse. Uh, obviously, you you uh, are a father and a mother who both played college sports. Right. My poor wife, Mrs. Cajun. <laughs> Uh, did not, you know, God did not, he, he blessed her with many assets, but none of which are athleticism or uh, a vertical leap or a 40 yeah. yard time. Uh, so I had to do it all with my genes. So I had to have superlative genes to get my kids to the, uh, to the college level. My wife, my wife dogs me to this day for not providing some form of height to either one of our children. But. It is odd, right? Cause you're six, four, I'm six, four. And, uh, and I don't have any kids that are as tall as me and, you, and your girls are, you know, they're not as tall as you. In fact, your daughter that's playing college, uh, volleyball is probably more akin to your wife, right? 100%. She's set her, she's she's same position, yeah. same, everything, same play style, which is really yeah. cool. Yep. Um, all right, enough about us, right? Uh, let's get cranking. We're going to uh, have a two-part video series uh, for brevity reasons. I don't think we could fit all this into one. I, and we're specifically looking at all 30 NBA teams. The first thing we have to do, Jonathan, is we have to identify who their big three are. For some teams, it's really easy. For other teams, we don't really know who that third guy is. And then we also have to keep in mind, so we're going to do that first. Then we're going to rank 30 through 15 today. Then episode number two later this week or early next week is going to be uh, 15 through one, our best big threes in the NBA. Uh, 30 through 15 is going to be interesting regardless. I, if you're an NBA lifer and you love the NBA, these are going to be great episodes for you. Uh, Jonathan, let's just do it this way. Let's start and go alphabetically, starting with the Atlanta Hawks. And let's first, let's not spend too much time, but let's come to a consensus on who – uh, the big three are for each team before we start ranking them, and then we can kind of go from there. Does that sound like a plan? That, that's fine because I do have a couple of uh, – well, I'm sure you do too. Some people are on the fence, so we'll see. We'll see what we yeah. come up with. Okay. And we're not going to take too much time, but yeah. you know we like to kind of talk. But So here's what I've got. I've got this fancy thing on the screen. It's the Excel spreadsheet, right? Yeah. Uh, I've got all 30 NBA teams in alphabetical order. You will see, uh, you know, in this column right here, you're looking at guys that are clearly the best player or one of the best players on the team. 
Uh, this would be the second best player on the team, you know, and again, this is not a perfect science. So don't shoot the messenger, just relax. We're trying to identify big threes, not who the best player is. And then this last column, sometimes we know who the third best player is. Sometimes we need to discuss it, identify it, and then we'll I'll delete, like uh, for the Hawks, for instance, our first team, uh, DeAndre Hunter and Clint Capella. You could even argue, you know, maybe, the, you know, A.J. Griffin. I don't know. We'll figure out who the big three is. We'll kind of come to a consensus. We'll put it in pen, then we'll move down the line. You'll see some of these teams are in red. Some of these teams are in yellow. Um, and I'm trying to remember what that was. Why did I have some teams in red and some teams in yellow? Oh, uh, the teams in red don't uh, – okay, so the green. The uh-huh. green highlight is players that I think are in the top 12 – of the best player. And then in the second column, guys that I think would be one of the 12 best betas. And then the third column uh, would be players that I think are one of the 12 best third fiddles. Does that make sense? And so if a team has all three, meaning one of the 12 best alphas, one of the 12 best betas, and one of the 12 best third fiddles, then I highlighted them in yellow. Yeah. If the team didn't have anybody first, second, or third that I thought was top 12, then I put them in red. Okay. Does that make sense? And so we can kind of talk through that too. Let's just get cranking. The Hawks, and we'll see. Y'all, y'all will figure it out. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks, I've got Trey Young. I, I've got him as the alpha. If you want to argue DeJounte Murray, that's fine. You right. agree, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, those are the two guys, right? They they each kind of yep. – I, I hate this experiment. Obviously, I don't think it's going to work out. I don't even know if they're going to finish the season with both those guys on your roster. Hunter or Capella as your third best? A, I know what your answer is going to be. It doesn't matter. B, what is your answer? Capella. Okay. But I'm putting Capella in here. He's a rim runner. He does his thing. The other thing I did, Jonathan, and I'm not going to argue with you, I think DeAndre Hunter looks the part, can't play it. He's what they call an airport player. He looks yeah. good getting off the airplane. Uh, but when it comes time to do things, and again, he took a little bit of a step forward last year, but I'm looking for like 22 a game, 21, 22 a game from him efficiently. I haven't seen it yet. And everybody claims he's this great defender, but I haven't heard a lot of talk about him as this elite either. defender either. Yeah, I think Capella is a perfect fit with those other two guys. That's okay. The reason the big okay. Guy. And and again, remember, uh, and let me make this caveat: this is not uh, we're we're not ranking the best big three to start a franchise with. So we're not taking into account age. You know, we're not taking into account any of that. We're talking about for this NBA season. If you had to choose your big three to start with. Who would the best big three be? And right. Also, okay, so look, taking clarify, age out, taking the future out. Clarify also, we're not talking about like a three on three tournament. This no. is these three guys affecting a five on five game. Right? Exactly. Okay. That's it. We're finally on the same page with criteria. Yes. So I don't have Trey Young as one of the 12 best alphas. I don't have DeJounte Murray. It's close, but I don't have him as one of the 12 best betas. And we'll talk through that when we get there. And then Capella is clearly, I, I think he's not very good. I I just don't think he's very good. He's not. Um, So that's our Hawks big three. We've identified we're done with the Hawks. The Celtics, uh, I think Tatum's a top 12. I think Jalen Brown is certainly one of the, if not the, he might be the best beta on the list. And then Porzingis as a third fiddle is preposterous. That trade is a real big ass deal as a Bucks, uh, as a huge Bucks fan. I'm very concerned about that. Uh, yep. Anything to say about Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis? Rinse, nope. that's it. We can move Let's along. Let's just say this. We'll get to them in our second episode. We will not be talking about them anymore in this episode. That's that right. is a fact. Uh, right. Okay, next. I should note, in this column right here, you'll see if a team has a point, a wing, and a big as their foundational big three, like a true point, a true wing, and a true big, and it can be a power forward, but it yeah. needs to be a post presence, I've marked that. I've denoted that because I think that's an advantage, right? Yeah. I think that is from a fit advantage, from a flexibility advantage, uh, from a foundational standpoint advantage. I think that's an advantage. And again, it's just something to consider. It doesn't sway me one way or another about who's big three or is better. In other words, I've got the Nets. They do have a point, a uh, a wing and Michael Bridges and a big in Claxton if you choose him as your third uh, but that does not make them better than the Celtics because the Celtics have two wings instead of a point. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I just – it's just something to consider, something to put down. I've got Michael Bridges as the best player on the Sixers. We've talked a lot about Ben Simmons on this channel. Yes. Um, yes. I've got – again, we have to assume some things. Number one is that Ben Simmons is going to play professional basketball. 
we're we're just assuming he is. We're I'm assuming not. he's going to show up and play seventy I'm not, games. I'm not. I don't want to talk about Ben Simmons. We're done with. Well, ben then Simmons. just tell me Dinwiddie or Claxton. No, I'm telling you, Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Nick Claxton. That's your three. And I don't think Cam Johnson's that good, but he's going to. He averaged fifteen a game, and Ben Simmons averaged six last year, well, and had not played care. basketball in three years. I don't care because I I know one of them's been only one of those guys has ever been a multiple All Star. No, no. Why not? Look, no argument. We we'll put. About- I'll go Cam Johnson. You're sure right. Cam Johnson, the catch and shoot guy, is going to be a better player than Dinwiddie right now, and Claxton, who's coming along as the next Capella, uh, the next rim runner, the next rim protector. I do. I mean, and look, I don't think Cam Johnson's that good, but I think he's, I think he's a better player. He he fits better in a big three than Dinwiddie. I mean, I'm not putting Spencer Dinwiddie in a big three. I'm just not. Okay. Okay. That's fine. He's a good bench player, you know? Well, I'm not taking Ben Simmons out because part of this process, and this is a hypothetical man, is uh, if you ask me, do I think Ben Simmons plays 60 games this year? No, I do not. I think he plays 60 over the next three years. But if you, but if you told me he was playing 60. Then what are we doing? If that's well, what you really think, well, it's the Saint Jonathan, but we're gonna have to make some assumptions. Like with Harden and with Lillard, those are the two. Those are the two big, you know, elephants in the room. But bro, I'm treating it. Dudes have been productive. Like no, freaking Lillard had a great year last year. Yeah, I, I'm not comparing. Them. No, no, I'm not comparing them in that way. I'm just saying we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to have some hypotheses here. We're gonna have to have, make some assumptions. Uh, I'm gonna assume. Lillard is going to be on the uh, on the Blazers, and we're going to assume Harden is going to be on the Sixers. And after yesterday, what he said about Darren Morey, I I know he is not going to play basketball for the six. I don't know how you ever fix that. I've never heard anything like that. Never. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but for this exercise, we are going to assume Ben Simmons his brain works and he shows up and he plays because as of right now, Ben Simmons is healthy and Ben Simmons is expected to be the point guard on their team on opening day. He is. All right. We'll see. I'm just saying. Uh, will he be? I don't know. Maybe something happens. I don't know. Maybe a should he be in the big three? He should be where Mikhail Bridges is. That's where he should be, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. But, but no, well, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, next, Charlotte Hornets. Lamelo Ball clearly the alpha. You don't think Lamelo Ball is a top twelve? No. Okay. Miles yeah. Bridges is back. Uh, yep. So we're gonna slot him into that second spot. I think even a, a, a Miles Bridges uh, spending a year in a penitentiary or wherever the hell he was. Uh, you know, getting shots up. I don't know what he was doing, but I, I'm assuming even with a year off of playing basketball, he was playing some form of basketball. He's going to come back better than he was before. So I put him as the second best player. And he had a really good season before that, believe it or not. He actually started to shoot the ball, which I never thought he'd be able to do. And then uh, I've got Rogier or Brandon Miller. I don't know what we're going to get out of Brandon Miller. We know what we're going to get out of Rogier. I would assume Rogier is on the downside, kind of. I, I would say he has probably peaked and he is kind of on the downside, but he's still a really good player. You could also put Gordon Hayward in this mix. You could also put the big Mark Williams kid in this mix because he showed some flashes last year. What do you have, Rozier, Miller, Hayward? Miller's got to be the guy because of the way the Hornets are going to force that. I mean, he's he, he's going to be on the floor. Start. He, he's more talented. I think he, he starts. Start? Does he start the season? Yeah, I think he starts for sure. I think you, you have do? those two guys on the floor, and I think Brandon Miller. Um, yeah, I do. And, and I think – So that, who's not starting? Rozier probably comes off the bench as a super and, – And Hayward? And Hayward probably comes – I don't know. Shoot, you could probably play Hayward in today's game at the four if you wanted to. Six you think Hayward at the four, Mark Williams at the five? Are we forgetting anybody? I wonder. I've got uh, – let me pull this up, by the way. I've got uh, – by the way, if you play fantasy basketball, you need to buy Monster. Uh, let's see what they say. They say they're going to start LaMelo Ball, Rozier, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges at the four with his little ass. He need like six six. I don't know. Yeah. And then Mark Williams at the five. So you were right on it. You had the right starting five. Just, I guess, you know, they think that Rogier is going to start and uh, Hayward's not. So we'll see. They're going to start Miller for sure. Anyhow. Yeah, they're going to get Miller in there for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a reason to go watch Charlotte Hornets game. And if Miller and LaMelo and Miles Bridges are the future of your team, then yeah. you're going to want to get as many minutes as possible. There's people out there that are projecting the Hornets to win a lot more games than I think. I think they're going to absolutely suck. Well, they're going to uh, I think LaMelo Ball is the real deal. I just don't think there's enough consistency around him. I mean, you're basically relying on a rookie to be your third best player. As we and just I think concluded. LaMelo Ball is the real deal from a production standpoint. I don't know if he's a winner yet. We'll we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We need we need, we need need LaMelo Ball to be healthy because he, he's a really good player and he's really, really fun to watch. Yep. Chicago Bulls, um, That's easy. Zach Levine. DeMar DeRozan, clearly one, two, or two, one in some order. Do you have, do you like the order? You like Levine one, DeRozan two, or you still say what, what? 
Uh, Busevich, I have as one of the best third fiddles in the NBA. It's Fringe good. all-star, had a great season last year. A lot of people are talking about him maybe tailing off this season. Like maybe he's at that age where big, you know, uh, sort of groundbound white dude sort of starts to decay. But we've seen Brook Lopez, um, you know, defy father time and have great seasons. Not that Vujicic plays like him, but uh, what do you think? He's clearly well, the third, why right? Start, not, not- why would he start to decay considering he is groundbound, always has been? Yeah. He shoots threes, he's good in the post, and he doesn't Still. play defense. So yeah. who cares? I mean, yeah, that, you're right. His defense can't get any worse. Uh, yeah. his, his lift isn't going to get any less. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe he's going to age great. Uh, I've got Levine, DeRozan, Vujicic. Uh, not a bad big three. Uh, interesting to see where we'll rank them, whether we'll talk about them today or whether we'll talk about them on the next episode. Cleveland Cavaliers, Mitchell, Garland, Mobley, clearly, yes? Yeah. We need, yep. we need to talk about that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, in that order? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I agree. I agree in that order. You think Donovan Mitchell's one of the 12 best? I had him as my 12th best. I think so. I think you could, you could definitely argue it for sure. You, yeah. you, you think Donovan Mitchell is a top 12 player in the NBA? It's, he's If he's not, he's right there. So he's 12 to 15. I agree. I, it was really tough. I had to make some decisions, and we'll talk about that as we get down. Like You could argue Halliburton's better than Donovan Mitchell. I, you could I, argue I, Kawhi I, Leonard's better than Donovan Mitchell. But who, I don't – who was the second guy you said? Halliburton, Kawhi Leonard, John Morant, Donovan Mitchell. You're going to have to choose. Yeah. Oh, John Mor- yeah, you're right. Anyhow, it's okay. It's tough, yeah. dude. Go look at their numbers. I mean, Mitchell's numbers and Morant's numbers. I mean, yeah. I don't yeah, know, man. It's tough. Uh, again, the, the green is just kind of a little bit forgotten. It's not an exact science. I didn't literally go do a deep dive. Mitchell Garland Mobley is nasty, and that's point big wing, too, which helps – uh, next, Dallas Mavericks, Doncic, Kyrie, and then what the hell are we even talking about? Well, I don't even Hardaway, know where to go. I put Hardaway Jr., but you're right. You could really, you could just put question mark there. Honestly, I mean, you really could. Um, uh, let's, let's put Mark put Cuban. Jr. Let's put Mark Cuban. Yeah, as the third best player. Nice, because yeah, because it doesn't matter. They, That's they. I, I'm not joking. They might have the worst third best player of oh. any team out of the 30. I'm not. Hey, uh, outside of a couple of teams, it it would be inarguable. I could argue a couple of other teams as well. Yeah, uh, Brandon Miller would be the third best player. We know that. Uh, Cam yeah. Johnson would be the third best player. Capella would be uh, every single. I'm telling you, I think every player in this list would be you a better, right. third best you player. Right. Yeah. Listen to this. Right. I think the Houston Rockets have seven players that would be the third best player on the map. Oh, so sure. I That's crazy. It, that is a hot take. That is something we need to clip. <laughs> Cajun Cardboard thinks that the Houston Rockets have eight, seven to eight to nine players that would be the third best player on the Dallas Mavericks. And people are still going to predict the Mavericks to win. And it's because of the big two. The big two is ridiculous. I mean, both of those guys are ridiculous. Kyrie Irving, it could be argued, is one of the 12 best players in the NBA, you know, when he shows up and plays and got his head nope, on screen. Don't do it. I will not do it. You will not make me do it. Do no. what? He's not one of the 12 best players in the NBA. Okay. He is one of the 12 best betas, but he is best not. offensive players. Oh, he's clearly one of the 12 best betas. So if we were ranking the, the best big two, where would those two rank? Don't forget about fit, just straight up talent. Where would those two rank if we were ranking the best big oh, two? If you just said talent, they're in the top five. They're in the top five without question. Yeah. They're yeah. maybe in the top three. You know, yeah. if you take into account age, they may be in the top. They may be the top. I don't know. We'll see. Dodge is still young. Uh, Denver Nuggets. Uh, oh, my God. We don't even need to talk about this. The only decision to make here, we know Jokic and Murray. The only decision we need to make is Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. pick one. I know, bro. I'm going to tell you right now. It, uh, before the finals, I would have told you Aaron Gordon because I, I thought Michael Porter Jr. I started to believe that he wasn't going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but he, he played pretty well in the finals, especially the last game. So, um, I would probably say just based on upside, I'd take Porter Jr., but – it's it's what what man. I mean, it really is. I mean, you could you could put it together. Let me ask you this question: Porter Jr. is in the top twelve of the third best players. Whew, I'd have to look. At, I'd have it close. Uh, Aaron Gordon is in the top twelve of the third best players. It's close. Yeah, right. You know that's it's close, and we'll look we'll look through we'll look through that a little bit. Maybe harder. that's why they won the finals because they have a third and fourth best player. They have a big four. <laughs> that and Bruce Brown was this guy on a you know minuscule contract who just showed up out of nowhere and was like the greatest energy player I've ever seen in my life and on both ends of the court. Uh, I mean, they just had a lot of, they had a lot of really good players. I mean, I, I don't think they were a deep team, 
But I think their one through eight was damn good. And in the playoffs, one through eight means a lot more than one through 15. You know, it just yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did, here's a team that I really like. And, the, and we're going to rank league pass teams later on, Jonathan. At some point, we're going to rank our teams that we would just want to watch play. Not, not because they're the best teams, but teams that we would want to put eyeballs on on league pass on a random Thursday night at 1030, you know, West Coast game or something. Uh, the Pistons, Cade Cunningham as the the best player. I've heard amazing stuff yeah. coming out of that select camp. Like, yeah. like he might have been the best player there. Uh, like Grant Hill stuff. Like uh, Grant Hill type stuff. Yeah, real, real serious yeah. shit. Like he's a lot bigger than people think. Right. They wanted him to, uh, it, it, you know, replicate that Luka Doncic role. And so he was the Luka Doncic on the team that was pushing the USA team and basically scrimmaging against them. And apparently yeah. he just tore their ass to pieces, dude. He was like unstoppable yeah. and just tore them to pieces and looked phenomenal physically. Yep. Kay Cunningham won. Jaden Ivey, two. Then I got Bogdanovich or Jalen Duran as three. Duran's coming on strong, man. As a young rim running big, as a, again, we keep talking about Capella, you know, but like the next rim running big rim protector guy built like a freaking tank. Uh, Bogdanovich or Duran, pick one. Well, I would I would put Bogdanovich second, actually. I know. He would be third for me. Yeah, I know. You're going to like old white shooters because you are one. Well, I'm Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, and Bogdanovich. Uh, I don't think any of those three guys are in the top 12 in their slot, personally. No, uh, Golden State Warriors, I got Steph one. I got Clay two, but you could argue Wiggins is two. I don't know, right? I'm so glad you did this. Thank God you did this. Uh, you, you want no Draymond? Yes. No Draymond? Thank you. Thank you. I mean, not right now, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wiggins, Wiggins playing a full year, you could definitely argue him for the second slot, but I need to see it. First, yeah, I'd still put Clay there right now. So let's flip flop Wiggins and Clay Thompson. Clay would still probably be in my top 12 third fiddles if you moved into he third. So well, in, in Wiggins the, would not, not be in the what Wiggins wouldn't be in your top 12 betas, though. No, 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 no. But if we flipped it, the green highlight would still be there because Clay yeah. or Wiggins, whichever one you choose is your third fiddle, that guy's third fiddle. No yeah. Kaminga here. Interesting. No, not yet. Uh, or <laughs> Moses Moody. Yeah, not yet. Let's revisit in the year 2000. Never. Uh, okay, Houston Rockets. Uh, you know, this is my, you know, my up and coming team, my 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 secondary team, my side piece, right? The Bucks are my team. This is my side piece. Houston Rockets. I, I put can't Van Vliet first. Huh? I can't believe you did that. You know, I had to put Van Vliet number one because they paid him all this money. They're bringing him in. He's going to get crazy minutes. I don't like it. I don't want him there. He, I think he's a terrible shooter. He's a little fat dude. I know everybody's like, oh, he's a better defender than you think. I'm like, is he? I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I buy all that crap. I didn't have uh, him in my three. I didn't even put him in my three. Are you serious? I didn't because I think he's a terrible shooter also. And he I think he's an all-star team. So? He's so a pro. It. He knows how to play basketball. You're not going to have any issue. I, I, I don't know. This is a mess. Uh, uh, somebody from Houston might be screaming at their screen, try, typing up a death threat to us right now because I don't really know what the hell to do with the Rockets. I watch a lot of Rockets games because I invested – the last prospect that I invested to in the basketball card market was yeah. Kevin Porter Jr. And believe it or not, I've actually done really well uh, yeah. because the timing was pretty good. And I'm still holding on to some, which yeah. uh, we'll see where that goes. And it, it's a muddy-ass picture I don't know. I mean, hell, Jonathan, there is a chance Amen Thompson or Cam Whitmore might end up being the third best player on this team. I don't know. Those guys look really good. Unfortunately, they all play the same effing position, man. So I don't know what to do with it. I got Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, KPJ. I know Shingoon. We know exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get Jokic, poor man's Jokic, right? That's what we're going to get. Um, I know what we're going to get in Van Vliet. We're going to get a guy that shoots about 39% from the field and about 32% from three-point range, uh, but he's a rock and he's a solid point guard and he's not an idiot. They need a non-idiot in their starting lineup. Is that fair? I agree. And so if I did – this is how I did it, okay? I actually put Jalen Green first and because I think with a guy like Van Vliet, I think he's going to be a little bit more solid this year. He may make a jump. Shangoon, 100%. He is – he might be the best player on the team. He might okay? be the best player on the team. But I don't think he's the alpha, right? So I think he's a secondary guy regardless. <laughs> and then, you know, Kevin Porter, I mean, whatever, you don't know, but you could you could pick there. I would probably put Van Vliet third uh, if I did it. If I this really is chaos. It. We got to pick one. Jalen Green, let's put Jalen Green like there. Jabari, like and look, to be fair, to be fair, Jonathan, Jabari Smith had a monstrous summer league, and by all accounts, everybody says he looks really good. I know you're not high on him. Yeah. 
because you think he's soft, but it sounded like he had a really good summer league, and I know summer league is summer league. So um, I always go back to Jeff McKinnis scoring like 50 in summer league as a reminder, hey, summer league, summer league, relax with that. Um, okay, uh, where were we? Sorry. Uh, Indian Pacers, Tyrese, clearly the one. Uh, Miles Turner, clearly the two, probably, even though he's kind of boring and getting there. Uh, I got Matherin as the third. Is there any argument for Buddy Heald or any of those other guys? Heald is the only guy you'd argue, but I think Matherin makes a jump yeah. this year. So Who else? What do they have on there for their depth chart for Indiana? I want to make sure we're not missing somebody here. Indiana is an interesting team where they got a lot of good guys uh, and then only one real great player. And, and Halliburton is so good, man. Halliburton really is special. Hey, to our viewers, and I know we may have some people in Indiana eventually watch this, I want to apologize for the host just saying that Indiana is an interesting team with a lot of good players and taking time to do this. I'd rather move on. So, okay. Dude, you, here's the deal. I know more about the NBA than you because I watch it more and I pour myself. You know more about the bad teams. You're right. 100%. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's, you know what? That's exactly, yes. Yes. That's exactly what I should have said. Yes. I know more about the useless, meaningless NBA minutia and the bottom ends of rosters than you do. Okay. And I'm telling you, there's a kid on their team named Jarris Walker, who is a really good player. He's going to end up being a really, really good, meaningful, relevant rookie. And he's going to be in the rotation. He's listed right there at about uh, a 17.1 usage rate, still not 20 years old. Um, yeah, I don't think any of these other guys even belong in the conversation. Bruce Brown's a starter, right? So a guy that was coming off the bench, you know, for the Nuggets is a, a meaningful, important starter on the Pacers. They're just not there yet. Right. Uh, they do have a good piece in Halliburton. They need to try to get something back younger for uh, Miles Turner. Uh, yeah. He's 27. If they can move Turner and Heald and get back some young pieces, maybe that would fit Tyrese Halliburton's window better. That'd be really good. I think Matherin's going to have a nice season, a big step forward, nice season. Um, that's what I've got. I've got Matherin as the third. Let's leave it. Uh, Clippers, I've got Kawhi, Paul George, and Westbrook. You want to flip George and Kawhi Leonard? I don't, I don't even I don't even know what to say about Kawhi okay. anymore. Is there anybody else on the Clippers that we could argue is better than those three guys? And I know regardless of how you feel about Westbrook, he's still the third best player on the team, especially the way he finished the season. For sure, 100%. Okay. Yeah, you can't argue that. Yeah. Okay, let's leave it this way and not get into any of that crap, okay, about what order you want to put them in. Lakers. Uh, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, one, two. I put Davis one because I think it's close. It doesn't matter, right? Davis or James, you can flip them. They're both still top 12, alpha, beta. It doesn't matter. Uh, then I got Austin Reeves or Russell. I think this is Austin Reeves. It is Austin Reeves, first of all. And let me ask you a question. Who okay. would you rather have on your team, LeBron James or Anthony Davis? LeBron so James. This, this season. So then LeBron why would James. you then, then please flip those. Okay. That's important. Yeah. I can do it. Okay. All right. Austin okay. Reeves. And, and that's a point wing and a big, right? And honestly, Austin Reeves is playing a lot of point guard. He's kind of the third point guard for the Team USA. I think, you know, we see this. We've seen it before. We saw it in 92 with the Dream Team. We've seen it repeatedly every four years. Uh, and now it's like every two or three years because they got the World Cup, they got the Olympics, and they got the, uh, you know, all that stuff. So Austin Reeves, usually those USA guys come back with a great deal of confidence and a huge bump in their, uh, in their play, in their numbers the year after they do a, a Team USA thing. Austin Reeves is going to be interesting to see when he comes back if he really separates himself from everybody else on that roster. I think he will. I think he's really good. I think he's a really smart kid. And I also heard he's a scratch golfer, which doesn't surprise me. He seems like one of those dudes like Drew Brees yeah. uh, who's just like good at everything, right? Like he could literally go, you know, play, you know, pro golf or he could, you know, he's probably a freaking, you know, five-o tennis player as well. He just strikes he's me as one of those guys who can do everything for whatever he's reason. He's bigger than you realize. He's dude, huge, dude. Yeah. He's really, really big. How big is – uh? Six five, probably two fifteen. I'm gonna guess. Dude, let's look it up. He's big, man. He looked really big on the court. Six five, two oh six. I'm not buying two oh six. Yeah, two. I think he's bigger than that. Not again. Let's keep in mind he hasn't touched a weight, right? We we look at his shoulders. You know, you know. He reminds me of the kid on uh, on Wedding Crashers, but let's, yeah. the creepy kid. <laughs> What's his name? I, I painted this for you. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, I got John Morant one. Uh, isn't even though I, you know I don't dig him. I got Jaron Jackson two. I got Desmond Bain three. Uh, look, I think I'm going to cut you off real quick. I think we could literally look at the next five teams. Okay, okay. one, two, three, four. And I don't think there's any argument. Like I think you could just we could just say we could run through them. Let's go. I, don't think, I don't think Caleb Martin is there yet. I think Tyler Hero, if he's in Miami, Let's is do it. Yeah. 
I, I agree. I just wanted to put it down there because of what he did. Again, what he did, he did because Tyler Hero wasn't there. I don't see him taking Tyler Hero's minutes or usage or anything like that. So right. um, that's a bit. That's a nice big three, man. Butler out of bio hero. Now here's the deal. Remember, we talked about the Lillard factor. We have we don't have Lillard on the Heat. If right. Lillard goes to the Heat, uh, hey, that means Tyler Hero is not on the Heat, and all hell breaks loose because now you really are talking about something special. That would drastically affect our ranking. So let's yeah. let's cover our ass with that one. Uh yeah. the Milwaukee Bucks, yeah, easy. They they're yeah. obviously big three. Uh the Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards, Towns, and Gobert. Yep. Terrible terrible fit, but it is their big three. Terrible fit, but it's their three best players. And we'll see if they finish the season with Towns and Gobert. We never really got to see that experiment play out because Towns got hurt so soon. Uh Towns is playing for Puerto Rico. Dominican. The Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic, my bad. Uh, yeah, Towns is playing for the Dominican Republic. We'll get a great chance to see how he looks in the offseason. When he plays, he's the top. I know you don't like him, and I know he's a weirdo, and I know he, he, he is soft, and I agree with all that, but he's probably a top 15 player in the NBA. New Orleans Pelicans, we got Zion and Ingram, one, two, in some order. And then this was tough, dude. Trey Murphy took a huge step forward. It's not a, it's not tough yet. Uh, Trey Murphy, now, I will say this. the Out of the Pelicans camp, they're saying Trey Murphy is the dude that will take He's going to make a huge step, but I I still say McCollum would be the oh, third. Not doing that. I, I don't understand what your deal is with CJ well, McCollum. He's productive. I don't think he's I don't think he's an All NBA player, but I think he's a dude who's going to average eighteen to twenty. He just does every he's year. He's not averaging more than Trey Murphy this year. I think he is. Oh, I don't think he is. I think he is for sure. Put this down. Somebody watching, put this down. How, we need a, a bet. But, sheet. But keep in mind, Zion's not going to play. So <laughs> that's true. That's, I forgot Zion's going to play seven games uh, yeah. in, in a three game stint in the beginning and then maybe four games when they're going to have the ball in his hands a lot. So uh, I'm putting Trey Murphy down here. That's fine. Um, New York Knicks, Brunson, Randall Barrett next. Uh, Oklahoma City, SGA, Gil, uh, Giddy. And then uh, this is tough. From what I've seen of Chet, Chet's going to be really good. Now, maybe not. He's not going to be the offensive player Jalen Williams is. And we're talking about the Jalen Williams, the Bronco, the one from uh, Santa Clara, right? We're not talking about the other um, sloppy Jalen. We're talking about the real good Jalen who's got to uh, you know, home 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 home. do it. Got to do it. He's. I'm telling you, he's going to be a good NBA player, man. Who? Chet. I, yeah, like I agree, dude. I, I think he is going to be in the in the chase for the rookie of the year with Victor Wimanyama and Scoot Henderson, and it's going to come down to who doesn't get hurt. Uh, the one thing that Wimanyama and Chet have is they're both going to be in the top five in the NBA in blocks. They're and, they're both going to sniff all NBA defensive teams, and they are going to both, without question, be number one and one A in players that look most like an insect. Yes. Well, when you put them together, they're 15 feet tall. So that's yes. an interesting fact. Crazy. Uh, All right. Orlando Magic, Boncaro and Wagner is a great big two, a great young big two. If we were yep. building, you know, based on foundation over the next 10 years, which big two would you want? They're in the mix. Wendell Carter and Markel Fultz. Wendell Carter. That's who I have. I, I, Fultz, look, Fultz has turned out, like you said the other day on the, the last one, we're super pumped for the kid because he's turned into a really productive player. But Embiid, Harden, Maxi. Uh, Phoenix Suns, Booker, Durant, Beal, or Aiton? Oh, my God. How would you put DeAndre Aiton ahead of Brad? I don't know, dude. Okay. Portland, Damian Lillard. Uh, oh, we're, we're assuming, again. One. Hold up. You put Booker one. Yeah, Booker one. I had a Kevin Durant? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I did. No, oh, I think you should right. get a lot of pushback on that. Let's make a move. Let's make a move right here, my friend. Let's do it. Make a move right here. Let's see what yeah, happens. Mind, I've got... Booker said the reason why he was as effective as he was. was okay, because... here we go. Here we go. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. All yeah. right, that's fine. Well, we're going to look at what they did last year. Oh, God, how do I do this? They both had great years. I don't know what their, their numbers were, but, jeez, man, that's Kevin Durant still, like, as Kevin Durant. Did something bad here. Let me go back. I did something stupid. It's okay. We're gonna work through this together. I can call it out. I can call it out to you right now. I got it. I don't have it on the screen. Booker went twenty-seven point eight, four point five, and five point five. Okay. Fourteen point seven. Uh, pie ranking. Whereas Kevin Durant. Where is Kevin Durant? There he is. Oh, I just accidentally pressed your favorite player, Eric Gordon. My fault. 
I apologize. You Kevin Durant's better. better. Next, let's move on. You're right. Thank you. He had a better season last year. I just remember Booker made first team All NBA year before. Just remember Kevin Durant's better than Devin Booker ever will be. All right, next. Uh, Portland Trail Blazers. Uh, I got Lillard Simons, and, and it could be Scoot. I don't know, dude. I don't know what to do with their third or second or whatever. I know Lillard's the alpha. If he's there, sounds like he might start there. I don't know how it's gonna work out. You need huh? screen, your screen's off. Nobody on my screen on. Yeah. Okay, Lillard Simons, and then what do you want to do? Uh, I would put I would put Grant third right now, just because he's been there. Have you watched him play yet? Oh, yeah, I have. And I know it's ugly, but he's averaged 20 multiple years. He averaged 20 last year with them. Have you watched him Anderson play? Have you watched him? I have. No, I have. I'm just saying, man, I'm, if you put Lillard on the floor with that group, I think Grant is number three. So okay, well, but we're not doing that. We're just ranking their three best players. Okay, that's fine. Leave it at Let's that. Let's leave it this way. Let's leave it this way. Uh, that's interesting. That's a that's a nice YouTube poll. Who's a better player this year? Who has a better season statistically this year? Scoot Henderson or Jeremy Grant? All I know a lot of people. There. All depends huh? if Lillard's there. If Lillard's there. Oh, that's all. assuming Lillard's there. If Lillard's not there, I think Scoot goes bananas. For sure. For sure. Scoot, Scoot makes a move towards rookie of the year just from <laughs> straight up having that bitch in his hands like yeah. 40 minutes a game. Uh, and then Simon's can you know, play off the ball. Simon's can spell him, run second units, whatever. Sacramento Kings, Fox, a bonus, pick one. Keegan Murray. Yeah, that's your guy. Keegan Murray. Spurs, Wimbanyama, Vassell, and then what? I had Wimbanyama, Keldon Johnson, didn't care. Keldon no, Johnson's mark. not starting. And then a question mark. You may be right. Um, I don't know. I don't think Keldon Johnson's going to start. Uh, let's put Jeremy Sohan in there. Uh, he plays really defense, fair. and he's, he's actually the, the height he should be for his position, unlike Kelton Johnson, who's like 5'11". Uh, Toronto Raptors. I've got uh, Siakam, Barnes, and then choose one. Ananobi. I yeah, see. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ananobi better than Scotty Barnes? Maybe. But we'll have to see. Because Scotty Barnes is more versatile, has has more stuff in his bag. But I think so. Yeah. Um, I think so, yeah. Uh, Utah Jazz. By, by the way, what are the what are the Raptors doing? I don't, what are they doing? I don't, what are they trying to do? Like if you're gonna if you're gonna let Van Vliet go, then shouldn't you just clean house and just build around Barnes? Yes. Maybe nobody wanted Pascal Siakam at that contract, but I know that OG Ananobi was highly highly yes. sought after at the trade deadline last year. I gotta believe, but if not they really wanted to move Ananobi. He dropped though after that. So he like. Did. People- People aren't as interested as they were. Maybe he was pissed that he didn't get traded. Maybe he wanted to bail, man. Utah Jazz, Markin and Sexton, uh, Walker Kessler, or Jordan Clarkson? Man, see, to me, two two slightly different players. To me, I had Kessler on there, okay? Clarkson and Sexton are a toss up to me. And I think Sexton is a good player. I just think they're the same player. I mean, ultimately, you know, so. Yeah, that's fine. Leave it at that. Either one. Doesn't matter. There. We're cheating. Excellent. Perfect. Washington Wizards. Pool. I think Pool goes ape shit this year. I think he's going to go freaking bananas. Man, I, now, he look. Dog him out. Did you see what Mike Dunleavy Jr. said about it? No. What happened? He said Mike Dunleavy Jr., you know, who's with the Warriors, right? In yeah. the front office. He was like, I lost zero sleep in trading Jordan Poole. <laughs> now I know he is uh, not the consummate professional teammate. We know that we've got some issues. Uh, it's the one time where I've been on the side of Draymond Green uh, yes. when he punched him straight into his stupid teeth. He deserved it. Uh, I got pool one, Kuzma two. I can see flip flopping those, um, and then I've got. I think Tyus Jones has a great breakout season. I think Tyus Jones is a better version of Fred Van Vliet. That's my opinion. That's a, a great more efficient version of Fred Van Vliet. Great call. Yeah. Doing all of his stuff below the rim. Uh, and then I've got Avdi Ja on there. I think Tyus Jones for sure uh, is the guy there as the third best player. And here's the deal. Kuzma, I think, like I would – initially I put Kuzma one, pool two. But pool believes he is the one. Hell, he believed he was the one at Golden State. So he probably will end up being more – I think he's going to shoot the ball so much. And he's the point. I don't think they have a point guard, do they? Yeah. I mean, Johnny Davis is the, like, Tyus rookie. Jones. Guy. I, mean, I mean, Tyus Jones, obviously. Uh, Tyus Jones, Poole, that is a really uh, interesting-sized defensive-oriented backcourt. 
Yep. Uh, Denny, Denny Avdija, who's just never quite – he's kind of like the DeAndre Hunter. He's just never quite right. got the traction uh, that, I, that I was expecting. Cal Kuzma and then Gafford's going to get Buku minutes at the center position because uh, if you look around, they don't have another one. Their backup center is Mike Muscala and a guy named Anthony Gill, who was, I think, in New Edition. Was he not? Did he not sing a New Edition with Bobby Brown and those guys? Johnny Gill. I'm Anthony thinking of Johnny Gill. Gill. Previously known as Johnny Gill. Yes. Correct. Johnny Gill. Yes. Johnny Gill's cousin, Anthony Gill. Tony, Tony Gill. Uh, and then did you see that our guy, Jared Butler from Riverside Academy, yeah. uh, oh. our guy from New Orleans? Yeah. I'm happy for him. Signed a nice contract. So he's there. Everybody's no, no. looking at this depth chart and they're like, who the hell is Jared Butler? Don't sleep. There's a decent chance Jared Butler ends up playing on that team. Jared Butler's a good NBA player. He's good. He and Skylar are kind of intertwined. We want to see Skylar Mays and Jared Butler both succeed. Uh, let's go. Okay, we got to get cranking and we got to go quick. We're already at the 40-minute mark. Let's let's we go. just picked our big three. Uh, uh, number 30, who do you have at number uh, 30 on your list? Number 30, probably against popular uh, – I don't know. This is probably an unpopular decision. The San Antonio Spurs are number 30 for me, even okay. though Victor is on the team because I literally that? don't know who numbers two and three are. How about that? How about that? Bam. Let's go. Okay. Uh, number two, who do you got? Uh, you mean number 29? Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Number number 29. Sorry, <laughs> math is hard in Louisiana. Number 29, I have the Detroit Pistons. Cade Cunningham, oh, and I really don't think Jaden Ivey or Bogdanovich are very good. So, right. anyhow. Detroit Pistons. This is not scripted, people. Did we wow, look this alike? Is awesome. This is one awesome. One of us was very athletic laterally. The other one, not so much. Yeah. We're about the same age. One of us is an empty nester. The other one has 10 years left on uh, – on the kid train, but we're we're on we're on it today, man. Even though we're usually different, we're on it today. Yep. Uh, number twenty eight, Jonathan. Who you got? I have the Washington Wizards as number twenty eight. Are we going three for three? Come oh, on, let's go, let's go. And I see what this will be a boring ride to Orlando because yeah. we're not now listen, let's, I'm going to start interjecting some cool questions in here. Which of these three teams, in order, would you want to watch on NBA League Pass? Uh, two weeks into the season, just just to watch. If you had to pick one of these teams to watch, in order, which of the three teams? Everybody says the Spurs because of Victor. Not true. I want to watch how many times Jordan Poole stop it. it. Just to answer the shoots it, and how many fights he gets in verbally with his teammates. I'm going to go Wizards, Spurs, Pistons in order. Two Tell the truth. The don't bullshit. You're trying to be funny. I'm, I don't want to watch the Spurs. I don't give a crap. Really? You don't want to see Victor Wembanyama? I, I it's. I mean, yes, I do, but like you say, two weeks into the season. Give me a month. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, I would go in order Spurs, Pistons, Wizards. There's no reason to watch the Wizards. Nah, you're right. Kate Cunningham. I mean, there's not, well, there's no, in fact, if we're ranking all 30 teams, I think the team I would least like to watch on the television screen is the Wizards. Maybe. I can't believe we're doing this. Why are okay. we talking about this? Number 27. All right. Number 27 for me, let me find them. Oh, your favorite team, the Houston Rockets, are number 27 for me. All right, that's where you're just wrong. <laughs> Let's talk through this. you got to be kidding me. Oh, I've got, I've got Charlotte, not high, but higher than that for sure. Why? Because I think LaMelo Ball is a really good freaking player. I think Miles Bridges is a good player. And I think Brandon Miller is a super talented freaking player. Oh, I think Brandon Miller is going to be a effing disaster. Now he's one or the other, okay? But I think I think, he's, I think that is going to be a, a really big swing and a miss. You think he belongs on the Houston Rockets, don't you? I, I, could see <laughs> I do. I do. I, th I don't. But I don't think he belongs in the Houston Rockets rotation. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, the third best player on the Hornets. It would be the ninth best player on on the. Oh, Houston that's Rockets. not true. That oh is yeah, yes. That's oh yeah, it, absolutely, a absolutely. Brandon Miller this year is not a better player than Tari Eason. Brandon oh, Miller's not a better player than Jabari Smith. He's not a better player than Shingoon. He's not a better – he's certainly not a better player than Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, uh, or uh, – you know what? who we didn't talk about when we talk about the Rockets is your favorite player, your closet favorite player, Dylan Brooks. Move on. Okay. okay. I got the Charlotte Hornets at 27. Please comment below, Charlotte Hornets or Houston Rockets, which team has the best big three? If it's which team do you want to watch on TV, uh, the answer is – the, the question is moot, as Eddie Murphy would have said in the 1980s. Well, Ball makes them that, regardless. Makes them better. He's better than anybody on Houston. We know that. So, anyhow, move on. Move on. 
Number 26 for me. Strength in numbers. Yeah. <laughs> was the Brooklyn Nets. I got the Rockets 26. <laughs> Good job. Well done. I'm proud of you, man. That's big. That's really big for you. That is awesome. And yeah, so much better than the Hornets that they were one spot above. Right. Our deal, look, our deal with the Nets, and we're going to be off our deal with the Nets, and I got to have the Nets coming up soon, but our deal with the Nets, yeah, is that I am assuming Ben Simmons shows up to work. And you are assuming Ben Simmons does not show up to work. I don't know why you think. Of America, like why do you America. think? Why do you think somebody who's played like fifty games over the last sixteen seasons, who photoshops his off-season workout photos and accidentally forgets that he already posted the photo where he was not that big? Uh, why do you think somebody like that, with eleven burner accounts, seven psychologists, and uh, and no interest whatsoever in playing basketball, is not going to be ready? To slap the floor and defend and and run a team on day one, I don't know. I'll never figure it out. Here's Jonathan, we're kind of eerily close so far. Are we? Do we have the same bottom six? That is awesome. Do we have the do same bottom six? Do not, because the Hornets are a little higher to me. Like I said, a little bit higher. Okay, so who's your 25? 25 for me, let me find them, was the Indiana Pacers. Mm. I can see that. I can see that. In fact, they got to be coming up because they they remind me of the Hornets because Halliburton's just that good, right. but Miles Turner and Matherin just aren't, and Miles right. Bridges and Rozier just aren't, or I don't have Rozier, I had oh, whatever. Miller. Brandon freaking Miller, the guy who was not any good in some. Yeah, Brandon Miller. Yeah, that's something we're going to talk about all season. You love Brandon Miller. I got the Pacers I right there. I love Brandon Miller. I just think he's better than Terry Rozier, Fine. or not yet, but will be. I got Pacers at twenty four as well. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 23. 23 for me. Where is 23? I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh, it's the uh, Charlotte Hornets. Okay. I got the Hawks, 23. Ooh. Big two. It's well, the first it's, a, it's the first time where we get to a big two, you know, where it's just it's, – it's two really good. And, yeah. again, I know, say whatever you want about Trey Young. Go look at his numbers last year. Trey Young had some freaking good-ass numbers last year. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a big two. It's the first big two that we've seen because, really, you know, Halliburton and Miles Turner, that's not a big two. The Nets, of course, they don't even have a big one. Bridges is okay. The Rockets, we don't even know what to do with them. LaMelo has nobody. Uh, you know, Jordan Poole and Kuzma, that's not a big two. A lot of question marks. Uh, the Detroit Pistons, I like Caden and Jay, uh, Jay Nivey, but they don't really fit great together. Ironically, neither does Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, in my opinion. And then Wimbenyama's flying solo. So that's the first legitimate big two, albeit, not coincidentally, the worst fit of the big twos that we're about to start talking about. Yes, for sure. Okay, number 22 after the Hawks. The Hawks, well, the Hawks were my 22. Oh, they were? Yeah. Okay, I got the Raptors there. Hmm. Ah. Ironically, the Raptors are next up for me. Okay, so we're we're lockstep, man. We're really yeah. close. Yeah. Um, Siakam, Barnes, Ananobi sounds better than twenty two, doesn't it? It's it's because they they don't have a big one That's or right. a big That's two. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Ananobi's a great third fiddle, or if you want to flip him and Barnes, that's a great third fiddle. But they don't have that elite alpha. They don't have an elite beta. Um, I think that's it. And, and I think that's why they are constantly toiling in mediocrity and finishing kind of in the middle of the pack is well, because they're that's always true. good, not great. Yeah. You know, the year they had a great player was a healthy Kawhi Leonard. They were great. and <laughs> They don't have him anymore. Right. Siakam's a, a, a really good player, puts up numbers in the regular season, but – He's one of the worst alphas. In the he's league. the worst alpha. Is he the worst? He might be. He might be the. I worst. don't know. Let's let's think of the. Let's look at the list right now. Uh, yeah. Well, he he's better than Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. Right. Um, he's, he's he's not that, he, he's line. not better than Laurie Markin. No, I don't think so. Okay, he's not better than. Uh, I I would certainly, if you said, who do you want, Women Yama or Siakam? I'm taking Women Yama. Oh, yeah, eight, eight sure. days a week. Yeah. Fox, Lillard, Durant, Embiid, Boncaro, uh, Shea Gilders, Alexander, Jalen Brunson, Zion, a healthy Zion or Ingram, uh, Anthony. Ed, I mean, dude, Houston. Houston doesn't have one. I mean, he's better than Van Vliet, obviously. Or yeah, Durant. yeah. Siakam is better than Van Vliet. Uh, he's. It, would you take Siakam or Alperin Shingun for the next five years? Probably Shingun. 
I'd take Shingun. Yeah. Uh, maybe we got to fix <laughs> Shingun and Van Vliet, but we're talking about next year. Yeah. Uh, would you take Siakam or Cade Cunningham for one season? I'm taking Cade Cunningham. I really I'm do. Cade Cunningham. Uh, Jokic, Doncic, Mitchell, Levine, clearly Lamelo, Michael Bridges, or Siakam. I still think I'm taking Bridges. I really I do. Think I'm taking Bridges because we know he's elite, elite defensively. Yep. Tatum and Trey Young, dude. He's yep. the he's the second worst alpha behind Poole or Kuzma. Third, because he's better than uh, Van, Van Vliet. Yeah, Van Vliet. Yeah, better than Shingun next year. Next year. Numbers wise, sure. he was. I think. I mean, maybe not. We'll see. But I think it, you could argue it right now for sure, based on what he's an All NBA player. We're not giving him enough respect. And I know he's he's made an All NBA team, right? He made an All NBA yeah. team. Yeah, he's yeah. a really good player, man. He averaged twenty five a game, twenty four a game, so whatever. Boring. I just it's, he plays yeah. such a he can't be the best player on a good team. That's all there is to it. He just can't be. You know, he did great in the two. Uh, phenomenal. 21. That's all he averaged is twenty one. No, number twenty one on your list. Oh, sorry. Um, 21 for me was I, – I told you, Toronto was 21 for me. I got the Jazz 21, and I like the Jazz. Wow. Um, the Jazz 20. This is crazy, man. Yeah. Um, crazy. I like the Jazz too, though. Let's keep going and walk through it here. Trailblazers at 20. I have at 19. I have Portland. This is really crazy. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're about to link back up again, Jonathan, I think. Have to, yeah. Magic. Big two. Where do I have? Oh, what are you looking at? A spiral bound notebook? What are you yeah, doing? Pretty much. I, you know how I do my my papers, man. Oh my um, god! How many? Pa- you're looking like four feet to your left, three feet oh, to your right. What's going on? I have Orlando next. Yeah, eighteen. Yeah, we're lockstep, man. This was not scripted, people. I'm telling you, this was not scripted. We uh, yeah. Okay, see, I have eighteen, and this is tough because if you were if you were picking a big three for the next seven years. Yeah. Ooh, this would be a team. And this is a league pass team. I'm loving Jonathan. I love to watch. They've got four to five guys that I like. A guy that we didn't get to talk about. And this is where I'm going to dig too deep for you. Trey yep. Mann uh, is, a, is a young guard for OKC that I really, really like. Uh, he is not one of their big three. He is not one of the big four because Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren are in there with Giddy and SGA. Um, but OKC – has got, I think they have 133 draft picks over the next five years, is what I read. Uh, they obviously can't use them all, but for those who don't understand how the NBA works, those little pieces make deals work. They can package those picks to other shitty teams like the Wizards and, uh, you know, soon to be shitty the Hawks, um, the shitty Nets, the shitty Rockets, all those teams. Well, the Rockets are probably set with their prospects. They just need to figure it out. But uh, OKC would be a great team to watch. Who would you rather watch, OKC or Orlando? OKC. Yeah, me too. OKC, man. I like watching SGA and Giddy together. I did not think that was going to work because neither one of them are great three-point shooters. They're the same player. Well, well, they're not the same player. But you know what I mean. They like to get to the nail. Like They like to get to the elbow and then just screw people over with their length and size and ability. they got a great – Floater, mid-range game. They both can kind of post up little guards. Dude, Giddy, I haven't. I don't think I've said this about a player from Australia. And by the way, shout out to Australia. It's the second largest uh, geographic that watches my channel. So shout out to my nice. Aussie watchers um, and, and listeners. Uh, I should say our Aussie watchers and listeners since we're doing this together. Uh, I don't remember, uh, and he doesn't look like he would be tough. He looks like he played tennis at a country club growing up. But yeah. Giddy's got something to him, a little edge. Like, he's a little bastard, man. He's well, a mean-ass he's got some, dude. That's some shit to him for sure. Yeah. It's, it's real. Uh, and he's big. He plays bully ball. Like, if he gets a mouse in the house, he destroys that kid. Uh, 17. 17 for me was OKC. Okay. Knicks, 17 for me. Yeah, I had the Knicks higher. And I, and I, I struggled to have him higher because of Barrett, but I, I, I'm a, I've become a really big Jalen Brunson fan. So I had him higher than that. They're going to be on. They'll be on our second episode for me. Well, we're right there. We're on the doorstep of who's going to make it in the first and who's going to make it in the second episode. I think we need to talk a little bit about something that I don't think is going to come off as very well received. Okay. Uh, and it's Jalen Brunson. Mm, why? Uh. I think people have gone too far. I think people are going too far with the Jalen Brunson. Um, I I mean, let me just, let's go down the list. Let let me just throw out some names. All right. This is, this is, 
we're asking each other starting your franchise because he's relatively young. He's not a, he's not a 19 year old, but Jalen Brunson. And I know he played a bunch of years at Villanova and we, we got to coach against him in the EYBL, which was a privilege and a pleasure. And he was really tough then. And when I saw him, I was like, that's Jalen Brunson. Yeah. That little fat guy right there. Yeah. And then we watched him play and we're like, Oh shit. He's a genius. Yeah, he's, a little little midget, right. he's a little yeah. midget genius. Uh, and he's left-handed and he's all crafty and he you know, plays the old man yeah. game. Yeah. Um, Jalen Brunson or uh, Tyrese Halliburton Jaylen to run Brunson. your team for the next Tomorrow. five years. Oh, to run your team for the next five years. Next five years, Halliburton. Jalen Brunson or Darius Garland for the next five years. Jalen Brunson. See, that's why I'm, I go. I go off. Uh, I, I go off script. And, and everybody, and I know everybody on Earth. I'm writing this down because I'm gonna I'm gonna post some YouTube polls. How I think old these is are... Jalen Brunson? I want to know that. Tell me that. What? How old what? is Jalen Brunson? Oh yeah, let's go look. Uh, the easiest yeah, way to go, is to go find their depth chart. Well, I think his uh, game is going to age. Great. <laughs> yes, it's going to age great. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brunson is 27. Yeah, definitely Jalen Brunson. In fact, it's not even – I don't even put Garland in his freaking class, especially after watching what he did to Garland and Mitchell in the playoffs last year. Mm. He did. He had a great playoffs. He's Here's the deal. He's an awesome professional. He is he is no nonsense. He shows up. He's on an amazing contract. And I got to believe – well, how about this? Jalen Brunson or Kyrie Irving? Jalen Brunson, for sure. I agree with that. I agree with that. And by default, that means I think I would rather have Darius Garland than Kyrie Irving. And I honestly would. Not doubting that either. And keep in mind, every single person that you just listed or asked me about is more talented than Jalen Brunson. Every one of them. But I'd rather Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson never disappears, dude. And I know he has a ceiling. I got it. And I know I think you're correct in your in your statement that people may be going a little bit overboard with it. Okay. But the dude, and I'm not saying he's a first team all league guy, but I'm just saying he's a really good 22, 23, probably eight, five, no turnover. Like I think he's that dude, not eight rebounds, eight assists, five rebounds kind of guy who just shows up and makes big plays. And I don't know, man. I like him. I like him a lot. I'd take him ahead of those guys. And so that's why I have yeah, your- those guys, but not Halliburton. Not for five years, Halliburton, because yeah. I think Halliburton's got a chance to be super elite. I really do. Yeah. I, 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 well, he is. Like, from a fantasy standpoint, if you look at all the, the analytics and the dynamic, you know, all of it across the board, Halliburton stuff, that's an interesting uh, conversation piece. I would like the people listening to comment. And, I, you know, I'm not saying Jalen Brunson, he's in the conversation with all those guys. And he's yeah. on Team USA, and he just had a perfect night where he was like nine for nine. He's good. He's running the point for, a, you know, our B team, our Olympic B team or whatever you want to call it, Team USA B team, maybe a C team. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and Halliburton's right there with him. I, I just – I feel like people have gone too far because of recency bias. Let's let Jalen Brunson get another year under his belt, and let's see where some of these other guys are. Uh, remember, he's in a different situation than Darius Garland. Darius yeah. Garland's on a team where – you know, a lot of that usage falls into the hands of Donovan Mitchell. If you go look at Darius Garland before Mitchell arrived, he was everything. He was the Brunson of that team, and they needed him to do all of the ball handling, make all the decisions. I think Darius Garland's a guy who's way off the radar right now. Card collectors as well. I think Darius Garland's off the record, off off the radar right now. Well, I like I, Brunson. I got the Pelicans at 16. Irrelevant to me, if you ask me who I'd rather have in a playoff series to win a series. Today. Out of – out of Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell, I'm going to take Donovan Mitchell, but it's not going to be by as much as I used to think it would be. Okay, even though Brunson destroyed him last year, we've seen Mitchell do it in the playoffs before too. Who would you rather have? If I told you, you if it's a seven game playoff series and you get them for all seven games, they're going to show up with their work pail ready to work and play a seven game series. Uh, Jalen Brunson or Kyrie Irving, one seven game series. Oh, like they're going to be on their A game the whole time. On their well, they're going to show up and play their best. Yes, they're healthy. Harry Irving. I mean, you can't. That, that's a, that's a talent thing at that point. I mean, that dude. Is but for next season, you got to choose Jalen Brunson or Kyrie yeah, Irving. Next, I would take Jalen Brunson. Uh, you could. I, it would be a toss up between Jalen Brunson and Kevin Porter Jr. for me. As, I'm sorry, Kyrie Irving and Ke- Kevin Porter Jr. Like, who cares? Like, both of yeah. them are going to destroy the team that yeah. they're with. I'm not going to. Again, I'm sick of hearing your your negativity and the vitriol that is in your voice when you talk about Kevin Porter Jr. <laughs> um, I don't think that's right. 
Okay. Uh, I think it's unfounded because I think I feel like maybe you've seen him play like a total of like 50 minutes. Oh, but I the like 50 minutes talent. you saw. I think his talent, and you may be right, I may have only seen him play for 50 minutes because that's all I could stand to watch. But <laughs> from a talent standpoint, I, there is no question. I hope it clicks move and on. he figures it out. No, move on. I, I can't talk about Kevin Porter. All right, New Orleans Pelicans. That's my number 16. That's, that's the last, team. that's the last team that makes it in this episode for me. Minnesota's my 16. Ooh, interesting. Okay, we deviated there. Both teams have good big threes. Obviously, we agree because they're right in the middle of the pack. They're they're almost top 15. Yep. Uh, Minnesota's a weird fit. The Pelicans, we just didn't really know who that third is. Yep. Um, that's interesting for you, really. Uh, well, you're very low on Towns. Um, and Gobert. And Gobert. Uh, that's a good point. That's tough. I want to unveil my 15. I don't remember who it was. I did put thought into this. It's not random. I assure you. We're very close, Jonathan, on those right there. Uh, who is the – oh, gosh, yeah. Well, that's it. I don't know. What else is there to talk about? You want to just kill it right now and wait for episode number one? We're at the hour mark. That's pretty good for us, dude. I think we kill it, We and we don't unveil 15. Let's, let's move on. Um, I, I'm going to be interested to see who your top five is because we tend to differ on certain aspects of the game of basketball. And so I think the top five, although really, really, I take that back. It'll probably be number six through 10 that we differ the most on would be my guess. You think so? Uh, uh, I think as we get closer to uh, our top 10, uh, it's going to hinge a lot more on fit's going to matter. Yep. Fit's going to matter a lot more because you're splitting hairs between teams with really good big threes. That's uh, my so Minnesota fit. issue. That's my Minnesota issue. Plus I don't think Gobert can play yeah, basketball. Jonathan, it's, it's very well founded. Um, I could definitely, I don't know this, but I think my 15 might be Minnesota just because I'm also not very high on Rudy you're Gobert, but I am much higher on Carl Anthony Towns than you. Yeah, um, you, are. you are. And I'm also, I also think that there's a chance that after this Team USA bump that he gets, I think there's a chance that Anthony Edwards could be one of the top ten players in the league. I think he I'm could take him. that big, yeah, that I'm big of a jump. I think you're looking at the best shooting guard in the NBA at some point. I really believe that. I agree with that. It, definitely in the, in the future I could see that happening. But my question is this. You are assuming Zion's healthy? I am assuming Zion is healthy and plays 65 games. Okay. Wow, that's a tough. You I mean really, that's the that's the exercise that if you if you if you said hey sixty five games you got a hundred bucks bet the over or the under I bet the under okay. That's my point though is they were but the exercise the is they were number one in the West last year. I know, was, and you're saying they're all the way down, but you really don't think CJ McCollum can play basketball though. That's your issue. I'm well, sure. I think he's on a slippery slope and drastically on the decline. I know it's, I think mm-hmm. he maybe had a hand injury, which was a huge part of it. Speaking of hand injuries. Yeah, you've got you've got an injured you've got an injured digit one of <laughs> one of those right there. I don't know what the problem is. There's nothing to is see. Here. Already? Don't yeah, know. I don't know what's I don't know what there is to see here. It's just an ordinary pinky. There's nothing unusual about this. By the way, show me your shirt. I've never seen that one. What's the little black thing above the? Yeah, I mean, obviously beautiful. That's our that's our AU program. Beautiful retro red storm shirt. But what's the black writing above the word red? It says elite because you know we've recently had somebody else take over our red storm program right uh, okay. i don't so so chase stanley is running our red storm program now the whole thing the whole thing because i want nothing to do with it after the nike debacle and so after that um you know he created the gear and all that and so you know every aau team now has select. To why didn't they you have choose to select exactly select really i think select now is strictly for soccer though oh that's a good soccer one. yeah basketball, so, yeah what is a great bad Bad rural AAU basketball team name. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Let me think. Of, let me think for one, and you think of one. Oh. If you're looking at your pool, right? Oh, we just got the schedule in. You know, let's send it out to the parents. We just got the schedule in. Our first game is against the Broncos. This is the team name you want to see. This the is the Broncos. team name you want to see. This as the team's name, and you know immediately that's a W. We're gonna Broncos whip their elite. ass. Broncos elite. I say. Bulldogs. Now, if you just want to talk the worst AAU team name 
that we've seen for the most bad AAU teams, it's ballers. Well, oh, well. with a Z, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's another great one. You, there's no chance. There's no way in hell that you match up and you go out on the court and your 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 kids get on the court and we're coaching, we're on the sidelines, and you're playing a team called Ballers or Ballers Elite uh, or Select Ballers with a Z, Ballers with a Z. There's no way they're rolling out 6'8", 6'8", 6'6", with yes. a, a crafty Jalen Brunson type point guard. Right. You're rolling out a bunch of a bunch of slashers who cannot shoot the basketball from the oh, outside. Right. Their coach has a uh, an earpiece in. Yep. Uh, and like a, a wireless backpack. headset. And a backpack. And, and he's got a backpack on. He is wearing uh, khakis. Yep. He is wearing uh, some type of maybe a, like a almost like a starter jacket. Yep. Uh, and maybe some ad- untied uh, old school Adidas frog stompers, the Adidas superstars, yep. and uh, has no interest in coaching the game. But let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go get them, ballers. So ballers true, story, true story. I'll leave names out of it, obviously. In high school, okay, the high school team that I coached for years, we played in a team camp over the summer, right? Yeah. And so over the summer, team camp, uh, team comes in, and my, my team at that point was really good. Um, your son played on that team. Okay. okay. And so we're at, we're at a university playing in a team camp. It was like our fifth game in two days. This team <laughs> comes in, they only want to play one or two games for the team camp. So they come in, we're their first game. They're our fifth game. Okay. okay. And they come in, all the coaches have backpacks on. They come in, you know, hooting and hollering. They go through a full pregame warm up with all the chance, which automatically I always assume. If you have a if you have an outstanding warm up, we're gonna beat the hell out of you. We're gonna beat the crap out of you. Okay, you you've got a large sample size. Yeah. yeah For those of you, yeah. Jonathan, how many how many high school games have you coached? A thousand. Yes. Okay. Know. How you many know? high school combined high school and AAU combined games have you coached? Two thousand. I don't know. Let's say two thousand. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So you've got a sample size. This this is not coming out of left field. You've got the data. <laughs> so, so anyhow, coaches come in with backpacks on, right? They're hooting and hollering. I think we won the game. I don't you remember. We could care less if we ever won in the summer. And so, uh, because we we just let everybody play. And at the end, okay, their coach is asking, hey, do y'all, is y'all schedule full? Now, he didn't ask me this. He asked my assistant coach this. So, my assistant walks up to me and says, hey, do you want to play them? I said, absolutely, we want to play them. I said, if they have an opening in their gym, let's go to their gym, right? Yeah. Well, they didn't have an opening in their gym. They came to us, okay? Okay. Walk in, that midseason, walk in, backpacks on. Again, hooting and hollering when they walk in. By the end of the first half, okay, I believe – in fact, your son didn't play on that team. My fault. Uh, I believe we had 12 dunks and we're up 41, 42, okay? And uh, the next thing you know, the next year, we were supposed to play them again and go to their gym. and they They were full. They were already yeah. full. They Magically. Yeah. 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 So backpack guys, we're going to beat the hell out of you. Really good warm-up teams. We're going to beat the hell out of you. Sorry. It's just yeah. the way it is. You know? That's just the way it is, man. This is the way it is. All right. Well, we know that, uh, well, 97% of coaching is recruiting, and the other 3% is before you get to the game. I know you like in-game adjustments, but, uh, you know, when your team's prepared, uh, sometimes sometimes you yeah. got to coach on the floor. I don't know. I miss that. Uh, I don't miss all of it, but I miss I miss some of it. I wish I could pick and choose the parts about coaching that uh, that I got to do. If I did, I'd go back into coaching. Uh, yeah. The parents would be the first thing I would eliminate. Uh, the parents, all the kids would be orphans. <laughs> I would get to coach a bunch of. I would get to coach a bunch of six, seven orphans. Uh, that would be the ultimate AAU roster for me. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's episode. That's part one. We're gonna do our top fifteen. Uh, big threes in the NBA heading into next season, not forever, but heading in just into next season. Let us know what you think about our uh, our deal. Let me give you one more look at the list. There it is. Pelicans, Knicks, Thunder, Magic, Blazers, Jazz, Raptors, Hawks, Pacers, Nets, Rockets, Hornets, Wizards, Pistons, Spurs in order uh, of just big three. Again, some of these teams are actually going to be pretty good teams because, you know, their 10 best players might be pretty dang good. Like, a couple of teams on here could be, you know, make the playoffs. I'll be honest with you. A couple of them we would expect to make the playoffs. The Knicks, the Pelicans, uh, the Thunder, uh, the Magic will push. The Blazers, we don't even know who's going to be on their roster. 
Um, you know, the Nets, I think the Nets are in for a big drop off this year. I think that was a lot of smoke and mirrors. I don't think they fit great. Uh, we're going to need a world class first team all NBA Ben Simmons for the Nets to make the playoffs, I think. <laughs> Not happening, huh? All right, that's it, guys. That's it for uh, episode one of a two part episode. Let me switch you over to big screen. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby and peace. There they are, the pinkies.